So the volume of a solid can be found by rotating, I'll just give you the formula later, an area under a curve about the x-axis or y-axis. So in this first figure, can everyone please look, what we're rotating, I need like a little, something shorter than, like a little bit of, yeah, bobby pin's good, bobby pin's a good length, no, too long, I want something, so, what, yeah, that's fine, all good, see this line here with the bobby pin, George's bobby pin, all right, it gets rotated about the Y, see how it might be, I don't know, three units up there and maybe two units up here, sorry. Um, what happens, it gets rotated around in circles. Pretend this is the y-axis. I don't know if you can see what I'm... No, you can't. Wait. See how I'm going around that pencil? And when you rotate, and if I do it on an angle, I'm going to end up with a cup. Do you get what I'm doing? If I rotate like this, tell me, tell me the shape I'd get if I rotate like this. Wait, so the pencil is, is, the, is the axis? Yeah. If I rotate like that, I'd get a cone, a pointy bit at the end. If I rotate like this, I would get like a drinking cup. So it's this gets rotated around and around the x-axis, around the front of it, around the back of it, back around. You end up with a, a solid, okay? But this bit down here will actually be straight, and that bit there will be straight, but... Okay, so that's if I rotate around the x-axis. I can also rotate, for example, this parabola here, half that parabola, like that bit from there to there, about the y-axis and end up with that, I don't know, what would you call that? Like a cap. Do you know what I mean? Like an open, round bottom cap. Like a cap. Yeah, sort of. Okay? Or like a cone, um, but not a pointy bottom cone. All right? So this, so what we're rotating is just this bit here. Can you see that? This bit gets rotated around and around and around. Okay? So it'll be, if that's your y-axis, oh, not good. If the bottom doesn't move. No. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The bottom won't move for this one. Okay? So, shh. Now, there are different formulas for rotating about the x-axis and rotating about the y-axis. You will be given the formulas on the formula sheet for rotation about the x-axis and the y-axis. And all it is is following that formula and substituting in. All right? Now, for volume about, you might want to write this. I would write this and draw a diagram. So to find volumes about the x-axis, so just start with this, x size 3.9. Volumes about the x-axis, the formula is, and I need to make it bigger, exercise 3.9, volumes about the x-axis, the formula is, volume equals pi, don't forget the pi, but you'll have a formula sheet, page 151 of the textbook, so volume equals pi, the integral from b to a of y squared dx. So, if they give you what y equals, you have to find y squared and just do the integral of y squared between the values of b and a. So, you'll substitute in x values for b and a. And if you're given this equation y equals something, you've got to work out what y squared is and you've got to square your function. Yeah, I would draw it. So, can you see that formula or not? Volume equals pi integral. B from B to A of y squared dx. Okay, it's not y squared dy, it's y squared dx because y is a function in x anyway. You'll see y is a function of x anyway. Okay, have you got the formula? It's in the drawing, they find the area just a shaded part, yeah? The shaded part is a three dimensional, no, it's a cup. We formed like a drinking cup there. But you only need to know the equation of this line up here or this part of the curve and that part of the curve gets rotated around. Volume. That's the formula for volume. Don't forget the pi up the front. 
from B to A. See, here you're integrating with respect to the x-axis. How do you know? Because it says dx. It says dx, and you substitute in x values when it's dx. If it's dy, it'll be x squared dy. Don't worry about that yet. Let's just do um, the first. Example one. Uh, actually, it's the first question from the exercise. Question one, exercise 3.9. Question one, find the volume of the solid of, rev of revolution formed when the curve y equals x squared is rotated about the x-axis from x equals 0 to x equals 3. A quick sketch. Oh, not going to have much. Y equals x squared. What's it look like? Listen, it doesn't have to be the best um, sketch in the world. Solid of revolution form when the curve y equals x squared is rotated about the x-axis. From x equals 0 to 3, what does y equals x squared look like? Concave up parabola. Good. All right, I'll, I'll dot the other end, but I actually don't need the other side because I'm rotating. So from 0 to 3... So when I rotate that about the x-axis, I'm rotating it this way. So it's going to look like a trump, um, a trumpet, like a or a flute end or something. You know, like one of those. What I'm not very good with the instruments. So here is y equals x squared, and it's going to rotate around the x-axis. So it's going to. Okay, you're going to end up something like that. I could draw that circular opening. Do you know what I mean? Like that. Are we all good? Now, girls, these are not difficult, provided you write the formula down and you just substitute the way you're supposed to. It really, with volumes, the formula is your friend. Volume is pi b on a y squared dx. That's what I do whenever I do these. I write the formula down. And then I say, wait, they didn't give me y squared. They gave me y. So if y is x squared, what's y squared? Yeah, it's x squared squared, which is x to the power of 4. Okay? So you substitute in. Because you're... Because you're rotating with respect to the x-axis, um, what values do I substitute in? What value? Three and zero. What does y squared equal? Dx. See, it's not hard. Well, the first one's not. So the formula is volume equals pi b on a y squared dx. Here's the question. Find the volume of the solid of revolution formed when that curve is rotated about the x-axis. So here is the curve, and if you rotate it about the x-axis, you get like a trumpet. So now keep the pi out the front, please, separate, and we get x to the power of 5 over 5 between the values of 3 and 0, and we get pi 3 to the power of 5 over 5 minus 0, 3 to the 5. 81 times 3, 243. Is it 243? 243 pi on 5 units cubed because it's volume. Units cubed and, and sorry, that's 243. You can. Please put the exact answer first. So we've got 243 times pi. Don't forget the pi. On 5 units cubed. Then you could put that it's approximately equal to 153, whatever. I don't know what they want it to. Approximately equal to 152.7 units cubed. But whatever you do, always put your exact answer. Please, can you describe the drawing? Describe it? Yeah. Like it's like a trumpet. I don't know. Um, you start with that curve, and then that curve gets rotated about and around the x-axis. You had to understand that for all the No. No. All right. Um, I'll, I can go into a program and show it to you. Like. No. No. You don't need to.
But do you do you get an eye? So what it would do, you get that shape up there, you get the same shape down there because it's that shape going out in all directions. Because you're rotating it with respect to the X. If I I can do it on a program. It's only from zero to three. That's why I didn't do it on the other side. Got it? And then you just flip it. Yeah, because you flip it over the x-axis because they want it rotated about the x. Oh, you're wondering why I'm not doing there. Yeah, because it's only rotated from x is zero to x is three. Oh, I just said that looks like roughly three to me. Do you know what I mean? I just did a quick sketch of y equals x squared. And just said that's zero, that's three. I haven't put exactly the right values. So we have to draw the bottom two. Look, often they may have a diagram, but you probably don't need it. But look, it. Look, I would do a sketch. Look at least the curve and show that it. Otherwise, you may not know which values you're supposed to substitute. All right, next one. We're going to do question five. Can I um, just please? The main thing here is to make sure that you're working out x to the x y squared. Shh. Are we ready? Can I turn? Just one sec. I'll write out the next question. Find the volume of the solid formed when that curve x equals y squared minus 5 is rotated about the x-axis. Now, don't worry about drawing it yet. What's the formula for volume about the x-axis? Pi B on A y squared dx. If you look at the equation that you've got, you've got x equals, and it's okay to do this, We've got x equals y squared minus 5. You can see the y squared, it's there. What do I do to make y squared the subject? That's it. Now, that's what you substitute, but I'm going to sketch it in case there are any nasties. Now, shh, girls, can you please be good? It's on the side. Instead of, you know, you're used to seeing, say, y equals x squared minus 5, right? If it was y equals x squared minus 5, it would be like that, right? But it's sideways because your x and your y are swapped. It goes like this, okay? But you only want it between the values of x is 0 and x is 3. So I'll do a quick sketch. It does look like that. Shh. That's what it looks like. That's minus 5. But you are only rotating from 0 to 3. So you're just going to get this bit here and I can sort of draw a bit of an opening. Do you get the idea? So you're going to get this solid here. You're only taking this bit here. Can you see that? You're just taking that bit and you are rotating it around and around and around the x-axis. So shh. The first thing we did was sketch the curve x equals y squared minus 5. Look, you could probably do this question if you couldn't sketch it anyway. Main thing down here is making sure you've got an expression for y squared, so please follow the formula carefully. Got it? So now what do I do? Pi between the values of? 3 and 0. 3 and 0. y squared is x plus 5 dx. Okay? You don't need to go and make y the subject and square it. y squared's already there. So you wouldn't go y squared is x plus 5, y is the square root of x plus 5 and square it back. You've got y squared. Okay, so y squared's there. Don't think you've got to go and do something more complicated. Keep the pi out and now integrate. What do we get? Plus 5x between the values of 3 and 0 and we get pi... 9 on 2 plus 15 minus 0 plus 0. So that's um, 4 and a half plus 15, 19 and a half, which is 39 on 2 pi. Units cubed.
39 pi on 2, which is approximately, please give us an exact answer, which is approximately 61.3 units cubed. Notice we put the, sorry, I wasn't recording. Um, question 8, find the volume of the solid formed when the curve y equals x plus 2 squared is rotated from x is 0 to x is 2 about the x-axis. If you look at this curve, it is a concave up parabola. It is x squared, y equals x squared, shifted two units to the left. So we sketch the parabola first, y equals x squared, shifted two units to the left. If you also look at this, um, it's x squared plus 4x plus 4. The y-intercept is 4, so I'm going to continue drawing it up here because the rotation happens from the x values of 0 and 2 and we're rotating about the x-axis. So continue this up here, 0 and 2 there. To draw the figure that you're going to end up with, you've got your x-axis. I would just draw the mirror image of, see, just this bit here that I've drawn quite darkly, that's going to be rotated over. I just draw the mirror image of that over here, like reflected in the y-axis, in the x-axis, sorry, and draw like, instead of a line straight down, draw it three-dimensional, open. Okay, so now we know that y equals x plus 2 all squared. y squared is x plus 2 squared squared. This is of the form a m to the power of n. So multiplying those two powers, you get x plus 2 to the power of 4. Your formula is volume is pi b on a y squared dx. So it's pi between the values of 2 and 0. y squared is x plus 2 to the power of 4 dx. Now, how do you do this? How do you integrate that? X plus, x plus 2 to the power of 5 over 5 times the coefficient of x, which is 1, between the values of 2 and 0. And 2 plus 2 is 4 to the power of, so pi is out the front still, 4 to the power of 5 over 5. Just because we're substituting in a 0 doesn't mean you're always going to get 0. So please don't write 0 automatically. So it's minus um, 0. To the um, 2 to the power of 5, sorry, over 5. And you can just, so I would just keep the denominator as 5 and just work out 4 to the power of 5 minus 2 to the power of 5. That's 64 minus 30. No, 4 to the power of 5 is quite big. It's 64 times 16. So I would, see how you've got to come. So what's 4 to the power of 5 minus 2 to the power of 5? You don't need to put the 5 in. You've got the same denominator. Just keep it. What is it? For that. And that's approximately, what's 1,000 over 5? That's almost 200. So that's approximately equal to 623.2 units cubed. You don't have to give an exact, I mean, you have to give an exact answer Sorry, point three. You do not have to give the one decimal place unless you're asked. Okay? I think that's it for... I don't think I'll do volumes with respect to the y-axis. Do you want me to do them? Or, I think you've got enough to do. Yeah, we've got enough to do. Do you want me to just show you the formula? It's about the y-axis. 